Today, we'll be talking about the Transport Refrigeration Unit Airborne Toxic Control Measure and its requirements. Transport Refrigeration Units are also known as TRUs or reefers. First, we'll get into the applicability of this rule, so who this rule applies to. So who must comply with the TRU regulation? Owners and operators of diesel-powered TRUs or TRU gensets operating in California. This regulation applies to all TRUs, regardless if they're based in-state or out-of-state. Something important to note is there is no low-use exemption, so regardless of the amount of hours a TRU is used, this regulation does apply. The TRU regulation also has requirements for owners and operators of applicable facilities. A facility can be a refrigerated warehouse or distribution center with a building size of 20,000 square feet or more, grocery stores with a building size of 15,000 square feet or more, intermodal rail yards, and seaport facilities with TRU activity. Drivers of trucks or tractor trailers equipped with TRUs also have requirements. Freight brokers, forwarders, shippers, and receivers also fall under the scope of the TRU regulation. Let's discuss the administrative requirements of the TRU regulation. Beginning 12-31-2023, all TRUs operating in California, including those based out of state, are required to report. The reporting system used for the TRU regulation is the Arbor system. Your Arbor reporting is required to be updated within 30 days when you make changes to your fleet. This includes when units are sold or scrapped, as well as when a new unit is purchased. Owners can report to CARB by applying for a CARB identification number, or IDN, through the CARB online website seen here. Applications are also available on the TRU forms webpage, where paper forms can be downloaded. IDN applications can be submitted via email to arbor at arb.ca.gov or mailed in to California Air Resources Board Transportation and Toxic Division, P.O. Box 2815, Sacramento 95812. Currently, IDNs are issued after a TRU is reported to CARB. The owner must then affix or paint the IDN on the housing within 30 days of receiving the IDN. Beginning 12-31-23, the current IDN labeling requirements will be replaced by TRU compliance labels. After registering your TRU, CARB will send you two compliance labels. The labels should be applied to each side of the TRU within 30 days of receiving them. Compliance labels will be reissued every three years. Non-compliant TRU units or units in fleets with outstanding enforcement actions, such as unpaid penalties or outstanding citations, will not be issued compliance labels. Beginning 12-31-2023, fees will be required for TRUs and applicable facilities. This fee will be per TRU operating unit and per facility. Every three years, each diesel TRU unit will pay a $45 operating fee, and each zero emission TRU will pay a $23 operating fee. Again, this is every three years. These fees are for all TRUs operating in California, not just TRUs based in California. Applicable facilities will pay a fee of $45 every three years. As a reminder, applicable facilities are refrigerated warehouses or distribution centers with a building size of 20,000 square feet or more, grocery stores with a building size of 15,000 square feet or more, seaport facilities with TRU activity, and intermodal rail yards. The requirements for facilities that fall under the categories described on the last slide begin 12-31-2023. At that time, facilities will be required to register with CARB using the Arbor system. Every three years, the facility will be required to pay the registration fee, which is $45. Facilities also have to ensure that TRUs operating at the facility are in compliance with the TRU ATCM. So how should facilities ensure compliance with these requirements? There are two ways a facility can ensure compliance. Option one, report all TRUs that operate within the applicable facility property boundary to CARB quarterly. Or option two, provide a declaration to CARB under the penalty of perjury that non-compliant TRUs subject to the TRU ATCM 
will not be permitted to operate within the property boundary. The specifics of what information need to be reported can be found in the regulatory language in section 2477.20M for truck TRUs, which are TRUs where the trailer portion is permanently attached to the tractor portion, such as in box trucks, the information that needs to be reported is the CARB IDN or compliance label of each TRU, the entry date and time, the TRU operator or driver's name, the operator's driver's license number, and the truck license plate number. For trailer or gen set TRUs where the TRU is attached to the trailer and not attached to the tractor, the IDN or compliance label is required to be reported, the owner's name, the trailer license plate, the operator's name and driver's license number, and the truck license plate number. For rail car TRUs, the information to be reported is the CARB IDN or compliance label and the entry date and time. If your facility chooses to go with the reporting option, the first report is due April 15th, 2024. Starting after that, quarterly reporting is required. Facilities will not be cited if non-compliant TRUs are found to be operating at the facility so long as the TRUs were reported. Quarterly reporting deadlines can be seen here for TRUs entering a facility from January 1st through March 31st. The information must be reported by April 15th. For TRUs entering from April 1st to June 30th, the reporting deadline is July 15th. For TRUs entering from July 1st to September 30th, the reporting deadline is October 15th. And finally, for TRUs entering from October 1st to December 31st, the reporting deadline is January 15th. The second option for a facility to ensure TRUs operating at their facility are in compliance is to submit a declaration to CARB that non-compliant TRUs will not operate on site. The facility must then only allow compliant TRUs that have valid TRU compliance labels or show as compliant on CARB's website to operate on site. If your facility chooses option two and non-compliant TRUs are found to be operating on site, the facility will be cited as well as the TRU owner. You can switch between the two options, option one and two annually, so long as CARB is notified by September 30th of the preceding calendar year. As mentioned earlier in the presentation, broker dispatchers also have requirements under the TRU regulation. Brokers are required to only dispatch equipment that is compliant with the TRU ATCM on California highways and railways, regardless if the company is California based. This requirement is reflected in many of CARB's regulations as well. Brokers must be able to provide contact information for their drivers. They should also advise drivers to have this information available in case of an inspection. Shippers and receivers are required to provide names and addresses to motor carriers. Motor carriers are required to provide the driver with this information so that the drivers can provide this information upon request. There is a guidance document available for brokers and dispatchers which can be found at the link on this slide or by searching TRU Broker Dispatcher Guidance CARB in your browser. Vehicle owners and drivers of trucks or trailers that use TRUs or TRU gen sets in California should only use equipment that is in compliance with the TRU ATCM. If a driver is inspected by CARB staff in the field, they are required to provide information to enforcement staff. This information includes their driver's license, truck and or trailer registration, the bill of lading or freight bill, the company name and contact information of the carrier, as well as any other information that is requested. CARB staff will also inspect the vehicle for compliance with other CARB regulations and do a visual inspection of the TRU. Manufacturers also have requirements under the TRU ATCM. Starting 10-1-2022, manufacturers were required to submit monthly production reports. On 12-31-2022, manufacturers were prohibited from manufacturing TRUs that don't meet the new refrigerant requirement for sale or use in California. They are also required to have a proper refrigerant label. There is a particulate matter emission standard beginning May 31st, 2023, which TRUs must meet or outperform in order to be sold or used in California. Beginning 1231-2023, manufacturers will be prohibited from manufacturing non-zero emission truck TRUs for sale or use in California. 
In order to make sure these zero emission units are serviceable and stay in good operating condition, the zero emission truck TRUs are required to come with a three-year or 5,000-hour compressor runtime warranty, and there must be a service and repair facility in California to conduct these warranty services. Manufacturers are required to report information for each TRU unit monthly by the end of the second business day of each calendar month. These reports should include the unit model name, unit serial number, engine manufacturer, engine model, engine family name, engine serial number, horsepower and speed, tier, whether the unit is zero emission, if it has an electric standby, what type of refrigerant is used, and if the unit has a verified diesel emission control strategy or VDEX. A VDEX is usually a diesel particulate filter. If the unit does have VDEX, the VDEX manufacturer, family name, and serial number should be reported as well. A template is available on the TRU page under the Forms section. Look for the TRU OEM monthly production report. This data should be submitted via email to arbordata at arb.ca.gov. Now we'll get into the emission reduction requirements of the regulation. Here's an overview of all the TRU emission reduction requirements. The original rule was based on a seven-year replacement schedule. Essentially, after seven years from the model year of a TRU engine, it has to meet the ultra-low emission performance standards. This applies to model year 2022 and older trailer TRUs, domestic shipping container TRUs, rail car TRUs, and generator TRU sets. Starting December 31st, 2022 for model year 2023 and on, the global warming potential for the refrigerant and the PM emission standard will be lower. Beginning December 31st, 2023, truck TRUs will be required to turn over 15% of their fleet to zero emission annually. Again, that zero emission requirement is specifically for truck TRUs, not trailer TRUs. The ultra-low emission TRU standard is called Uli True for short. The first model year of truck TRUs that met the Uli True standard straight from the factory were in 2015. Anything 2014 and older needs to do something additional in order to meet the Uli True standard. Depending on the engine, sometimes there are ways the TRU can be modified to meet that Uli True standard for the older model years. For model year 2022 and older trailer TRUs, domestic shipping container TRUs, rail car TRUs, and TRU gen sets, they need to take some action after seven years from the model year in order to meet the Uli True standard or replace the TRU if they were not manufactured to meet that Uli True standard. So, what is Uli True? It can mean a few things because there are a few ways engines can be compliant with the emissions requirement in order to make the TRU Uli true. The first is the engine can be equipped with a level three particulate matter retrofit, which reduces 85% of the particulate emissions. This is the highest grade of retrofit available for diesel engines. If your engine wasn't certified to tier four final standards from the manufacturer, retrofitting the engine with this filter can get you to the Uli True standard. If your engine came from the manufacturer certified as tier four final, which is currently the highest tier certified by the federal government, that engine meets Uli True standards. The tier is based on the emissions and the brake horsepower of each engine. Something important to note is that engines that are less than 25 horsepower haven't been certified to meet this standard and a large percentage of TRU engines are below 25 horsepower. Because of that, these smaller engine TRUs don't come from the manufacturer meeting that Uli True standard even in the newer model years. If you use qualifying alternative technology TRUs, that TRU would also meet the Uli True standard. This type of language is included in a lot of our regulations in order to give some flexibility to use innovative solutions so long as they are lower emission. Some examples of this could be a plug-in TRU, a TRU that operates as a power takeoff from the drive engine, a battery operated TRU, or various other alternative technology systems. The lower global warming refrigerant requirement applies to 2023 model year and newer truck and trailer TRUs, domestic shipping container TRUs as well. 
These TRU types must use a refrigerant with a global warming potential less than or equal to 2200. If they use no refrigerant at all, that is less than 2200 and is therefore also allowed. We do have a couple examples of refrigerant types that meet that requirement here on this slide. The lowered particulate matter emission standard applies to 2023 model year and newer trailer TRUs, domestic shipping container TRUs, rail car TRUs, and TRU gen sets. The PM emission standard is 0.02 grams per horsepower hour or lower. For truck TRUs, there is a requirement beginning in 2023 to phase in zero emission units. 15% of the fleet needs to be turned over to zero emission annually. The compliance deadline is December 31st of each year. If 15% of your fleet total is not a whole number, you would round the number. For example, for a fleet with three truck TRUs, 15% of three is 0 0.45, which is less than half. So we round down. That means no truck TRUs need to be turned over the first year. The next year, we add another 15%, so 30% of 3 is 0 0.9, which is over half, so we round up to 1. That means in 2024, when 30% of the fleet is required to be turned over, the fleet needs to turn over one truck TRU. The next turnover wouldn't be required until 2026. The main takeaway when you're doing your turnover math is that if it is over half or 0 0.5, you round to the next whole number. If it is less than half or 0 0.5, then you round down. As a reminder, part of the TRU requirements include hiring compliant fleets. If you are hiring non-compliant fleets or operators, you as a broker dispatcher can potentially be held responsible for the operator's non-compliance. We want to make sure that dispatchers are doing their due diligence in ensuring the fleets they're hiring are compliant. So what are some strategies you can use to make sure you're hiring a compliant fleet? You can give an annual notice to your carriers. There are some reporting system printouts that are available. You can include compliance requirements in your contract bid language. We do have some online resources available for compliance checks as well. These are all ways that you can show CARB that you have done your due diligence in order to ensure that you're hiring a compliant fleet, which may prevent you from receiving a penalty if a TRU operator you hire is found to be non-compliant. Arbor is the reporting system associated with the TRU program. If you go into Arbor and you have a TRU that you've reported, you can print out this Arbor certificate. It is two pages and shows the owner of the unit, the Arbor number, and whether or not that fleet is in compliance. If someone provides you with the sheet that says non-compliant, you would potentially be held responsible if they are issued a citation. This is what a compliant certificate looks like. So this is what you would want to see when hiring fleets. If you take bids for work or request for bids for work, you can require in the bid language that companies comply with the TRU regulation. We do have some suggested language for how this might be phrased. And because the requirement to verify compliance is in multiple CARB regulations, you may want to revise the language to include any regulations your fleet is subject to. Additionally, you can require a list of all the equipment and identification numbers or compliance labels for the equipment to verify fleets submitting their bids are in compliance. Here is the suggested language to ensure the contractors submitting bids are in compliance with the TRU regulation and to protect yourself from potential enforcement action if they are found to be out of compliance. The language says demonstration of current compliance with the airborne toxic control measure for in-use diesel fueled transport refrigeration units and TRU gen sets and facilities where TRU operate must be submitted in writing, including a list of company IDNs. If you are requesting IDNs, the suggested language is a list of IDNs issued by the Air Resources Board for off-road vehicles that will be used on the project must be included with the bid. There is a 100% compliance carrier list available online, which shows all of the carriers that have reported and are in compliance with the TRU regulation. You can use the compliance lookup tool to verify compliance of TRUs and operators that you are contracting to conduct work for you. This website is publicly available. You can use an IDN or compliance name in order to look up a company's information and their compliance status. 
For rental units, the compliance responsibility defaults to the owner of the unit. If the lease agreement is one year or longer, the responsibility can be assigned to either the lessee or the owner and would be stipulated in the terms of the contract. With the zero emission turnover requirement, there are some extensions written into the language of the regulation. If you run into financing delays, there's an extension available for up to six months. For manufacturer delays for an order that was placed no later than two months before a retrofit requirement and no later than four months before a replacement requirement, there is up to a six-month extension available. For installer delays, including infrastructure delays, there is an extension that can be up to two years. The compliance extension forms must be submitted in order to receive these extensions, and they are available online now. There are also some assurance written into the language of the regulation in order to help the successful deployment of these zero emission units. The manufacturers are required to provide a comprehensive warranty for their zero emission truck TRUs. They are also required to have authorized service and repair facilities that are located in California in order to provide these repairs. So what are the next steps for the TRU regulation? Part two of the TRU amendments are scheduled to go to the board in 2026. This is when zero emission requirements are proposed to take effect for trailer TRUs. For more information, visit the TRU webpage. We do have enforcement teams that operate in California. The California Air Resources Board has two main bases, one in Southern California and one in Sacramento, but we also have contracts with local air districts to enforce some of our regulations in the San Diego area and in the Central Valley. The on-road inspectors typically work with CHP officers in the field. This regulation is being enforced at the state and local level. As with any rule, the reason we enforce it is to create a level playing field among fleet owners. If we have a rule that's not being enforced, then people who are complying of their own choice are at a disadvantage for investing in cleaning up their fleets. If an inspector selects your vehicle for an inspection, they will do an on-road inspection and a TRU inspection as well. So what are these inspectors looking for? First, they will check to see if the vehicle or TRU is emitting excessive smoke. They will also look for the emission control label on the engine. They will look for any tampering, which includes removing emission control equipment or not properly maintaining it so it's not functioning. They will look for illegal use of diesel fuel. That would be when you are using red dye diesel in the drive engine of an on-road vehicle. Red dye diesel is subject to less taxes because it's meant to be uh, used in stationary or off-road use only. If red dye diesel is found in an on-road vehicle, you will not only get caught up in enforcement action with ARB, but it could be reported to the IRS because it is a form of tax evasion as well. Inspectors will also verify compliance with any fleet rules and monitor for excessive idling. There are a few ways CARB identifies non-compliant fleets. For on-road vehicles, the most common way non-compliant fleets are identified at this point is through DMV registration data. DMV registration data is tied to CARB compliance. Additionally, we conduct random fleet audits when we verify all of the fleet information for a company or owner in our various reporting systems. We conduct field inspections. These can happen at way stations, distribution centers, truck stops, basically anywhere your vehicle comes to a natural stopping point, you have the potential to be inspected. Lastly, we do receive complaints, particularly regarding smoking vehicles. State and local agencies are required to investigate complaints, so this will lead to an inspection. There are penalties for noncompliance, and they are assessed usually on a per-violation, per-day basis. Citations can result in monetary penalties and DMV registration holds. We do have an email subscription available, so you can stay updated on trainings, new regulatory information, and any changes to the reporting system or regulatory requirements. When you sign up for the listserv, you can select what information you would like us to email you about. We do have a list of resources available for you today. If you have questions about your on-road vehicle requirements, you can contact our diesel hotline staff via email or by phone. For off-road vehicles, you can contact the DOORS hotline or DOORS email. Drayage vehicles, which are vehicles that visit the ports, have a hotline and email available. You can also find trainings, guidance documents, and other regulatory information at our Truck Stop webpage. This page is updated regularly and is easier to navigate than our typical CARB homepage. 
For your TRU assistance, we have the Arbor email and hotline available to you. If you would like to report a smoking vehicle, we also have that hotline on here as well. Our final information for you today is available here. The TRU staff has put out fact sheets regarding the changes to this regulation. There are fact sheets and frequently asked questions documents available now. The TRU webpage hosts these guidance documents and all of the forms we've discussed today. We have a website available for level three filters as well, and a list of available zero emission TRUs. Thank you for listening in on the TRU air toxic control measure requirements, and that concludes today's presentation.